Good morning. We have sun out this morning. Isn't it lovely? Isn't it lovely? Poxitani Phil's still right with us. Yes. All right. Welcome to the Divine Fellowship. I'm Pastor Phil. That's Pastor Janice. But guess what? We have guest speakers today. So Jan doesn't have to do much. So that's good. Occasionally she gets the day off, kind of, sort of. Uh, T-shirts and sweatshirts that you may or may not want to purchase or wear even. Uh, real woman, watch football. <laughs> well, aren't we just two scoops of grumpy in a bowl full of <clears throat> this morning? <laughs> Yo, fish, bite me. <laughs> my bucket list, my bucket list. Number one, keep breathing. Yep, 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 yep. You know, every second Sunday of the month, we do um, the oneness blessing in bat. And it started this morning, and some of you missed it. <gasps> but don't, it's okay. They're doing it again after services, every second Sunday. And there's a little flyer in the back, a little bit more about it and kind of stuff and things. And I mean, it really is very, very cool. So if you can take advantage of that, that is one more wonderful thing that we try to do here. So we do have a couple patron saints by the name of John Lennon and George Carlin. Oh. And for anybody new, what did he say? So yes, it's true. And John said, we've got this gift of love, but love is like a precious plant. You can't just accept it and leave it in the cupboard or just think it's going to be okay all by itself. You've got to keep watering it. You've got to really look after it and nurture it. Yes, you do. Uh, and George, so far, this is the oldest I've been. <laughs> Always insightful. Very yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or, or profane, depending on yeah, which one you read. Uh, the Millie's book, The Autobiography of Former President George W. Bush, White House Dog, was published in 1991. The book earned nearly $900,000 in royalties, uh, more than four times the $200,000 George Bush earned as president that year. <laughs> Fun. All right. I remember Millie. Millie was a cute little dog. So. And keep company with good men, and you'll increase their number. Music hath charms to soothe a savage beast, as we've heard. That was William uh, Congreve, if you didn't know that. I don't have no idea who he is either. But. Happiness seems made to be shared. And what is lovely never dies, but passes into other loveliness, stardust or sea foam, flower or winged air. <laughs> what is lovely never dies, but passes into other loveliness, stardust or sea foam, Flower or winged air. Nice. Things that make you go, hmm. Hmm. I did this a couple days ago, and I, or yesterday, and I don't remember which one is which. So we'll just do this. If I've done it before, I'll do it again. Uh, it is well when one is judging a friend to remember that he is judging you with the same godlike and superior impartiality. <laughs> Cynicism, the intellectual cripple's substitute for intelligence. The educated man tries to repress the inferior one in himself without realizing that by this he forces the latter to become revolutionary. Hmm. Okay. Uh, clear your mind of Kant. Dr. Samuel Johnson, 1709. See, they were smart back then, too. There's really very little that's new now. Everything's just kind of redone. Uh, more Jeff Foxworthy, um, the Pacific Northwest according to Jeff Foxworthy. You can tell the difference between uh, Japanese, Chinese, and Thai food. You live in the Northwest. In winter, you go to work in the dark, come home in the dark, while only working eight hours. Yeah. You never go camping without waterproof matches and a poncho. You are, you are not phased by today's forecast. Showers followed by rain, and tomorrow's forecast, forecast rain followed by showers. <laughs> you, are 
You have actually Seattle, I think they did break the record, 31 straight days of measurable rain. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, you have no concept of humidity without precipitation. <laughs> and you know that Boring is a town in Oregon and not just a state of mind. <laughs> Oh, Red Skelton. You have to, if you, any of you have looked at Red Skelton, he actually said things that were kind of off color frequently, and he got away with it. So, um, yeah, yeah, me too. I do that too. Uh, Red, and this is uh, Red Skelton's recipe for the perfect marriage. Um, she got a mud pack and looked great for two days, then the mud fell off. She ran after the garbage truck, yelling, uh, am I too late for the garbage? The driver said, no, jump in. <laughs> Remember, marriage is the number one cause of divorce. <laughs> and that is true. All right. Anything, anything else? Hey, do you want to talk about the expo, Jan? Yes, I do. OK. OK. Good, I get to have my coffee. Hello. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I didn't touch it, I don't think. Turn it down or give me your mic. Mine is Okay, fine. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, good Lord. You know, it's probably a really good thing I'm not speaking today. <laughs> Yeah, but did you get any of the audio to go with it? You know, I really love this thing. <laughs> it gets the greatest stuff. <laughs> oh, this can go in the Divine Fellowship bloopers, and it's still can. <laughs> no, oh, I gosh. Just to look on YouTube to see what <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to break that one out and have it all by itself. <laughs> oh, we good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now back to something uh, maybe serious. Maybe not. <laughs> so, uh, Expo's coming up. It'll be our 20th. Woohoo! So, 20 years. Uh, some marriages don't last that long. My first marriage didn't last that long. Anyway, <clears throat> we need an army of people to assist. That's still too hot. So, uh, this is a sign up sheet for ticket takers and welcomers. So, we have two spaces where we welcome people in the door and take their money. So that's two people times two spaces, and uh, so it's going to take a, a few people to fill that in. Um, the good news is it's only an hour and 45 minutes a shift. So if you could sign up for one of those times, the times are listed. I just need your name and phone number. Uh, the person that's in charge of this is Tammy. She just started a new job this morning, so she had to go to work and couldn't be here. <clears throat> so I'll introduce you in the future, but in the meantime, I'm going to send this around. There's uh, Saturday and Sunday for each, each position. Um, so if you would be so kind as to just fill in where you can, would that be great? And then you'll be reminded what your times are when, when they get going. I'm going to start that around. And if you want to know who Tammy is and you're not sure, if you see a, I think it's a 1946 Plymouth out in the parking lot, it's like, what the heck is that? That's Tammy. That's Tammy. So she's, she used to come to the Mind Fellowship when we were down in uh, downtown Kennewick. Uh, and then she had a job, took her way out of town, and then she's back. So it's, it's wonderful. See, that's kind of the thing about the Dime Fellowship. You can go away and come back, and nobody cares. It's all good. We're just happy to see you. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Carol, who is in charge of the silent auction this year. We're already getting some items for the silent auction, which is wonderful. 
Um, Carol also has some positions that need to be filled. Again, the spots are only an hour and 45 minutes. So please sign up, help out wherever you can. And if you want to send that down that side. Any other comments you want to make, Carol? Mm -hmm. Yes. When will we start taking uh, donations? In now? now? Okay. Um, and there, there'll be donation slips in the back to put the item description and your um, value on it. Mm -hmm. And that's very, um, we need that. And along with the, if there's no value, we get to pick and choose what, mm -hmm. how much we put on it. And the um, bid forms are going to be a little different this year. We're going to start out at a, a base. You know, if, if there's the baskets that come in are worth $200, we're going to get them up there. So it's, it might be hurting some feelings, but it's, that's the way it's going to be. <coughs> this, this is a formidable task. Um, how much do we receive? Do you remember, recall, how much uh, the silent auction brought in last year? Do you recall? Several thousand dollars. It's a huge, huge money money fundraiser for the Divine Fellowship. So, it, and it's funny how it started because we, we started that and we had stuff come in. I go, this is just a load of all kinds of junk, I thought. And we made like, I don't know, 600 bucks. I was like, what? Yeah. Well, it's, yeah, it's evolved. So all kinds of items, um, men items if you have, like tools or things like that that they might like, um, baskets if you want to put baskets together. Um, please keep the items as um, new as possible. Um, we don't, to put it nicely, don't want a bunch of yard sale kind of stuff, like, um, but new would be really nice. But you can put baskets together as well. Um, stay away from the gift certificates. Those don't seem to go as well. So if you have items or something that you want to put together, you could put your business card in a basket, that kind of thing. So Unless it's maybe a gift certificate for a guy that's going to do yard work for a couple hours or something. So that might work. You can try that, yeah. Um, I just know that in the past, I'm not sure um, how well they do the gift. Guy. Yeah, it depends, no. on, <laughs> it depends on which guy. And speaking of which, we, we not, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we like him. <laughs> um, we also do raffle too. We have um, items that we do raffles for. I think we're going to have another, um, is it water to wine cruise? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to have another one of those that, that's going to be raffled off. And we also have um, this beautiful, amazing quilt that and, Chris Powell And guess who's in the audience made. today? I know, I was just going to say. And she is with us today. Chris Powell is the one who has every year made one and yeah. Thank you, donated Chris. it to us. So. Woohoo! I have packets of 10 tickets in envelopes here that we are selling. We're pre-selling these. If anybody would like to take um, an envelope, there's 10 of them in here, $5 each. Really nice tickets. Show them, show the quilt off. If you've taken an envelope from me here in the last couple of months, please get me those back as soon as possible. I haven't heard from a couple of people. So if you're not selling them, um, go ahead and bring the tickets back to me so that we can at least um, have an, a, an account of, of the tickets. We don't want to lose any of our tickets, okay? Um, another really quick thing, communion sign up. Uh, Sundays, um, we put together communion to share with everybody. It hadn't been sent around for February, so I'm filling up February. If February fills up, maybe fill up March, um, but we could use some volunteers for that. I think I'm done. Anybody want an envelope for tickets? Come see me. Cool, thank you. Yeah, it literally does take an army. And my golly, everyone's up to the task every single year. Thank you very much. And the booths are almost full too. And the booths are almost full, so if you know anybody that needs a booth, talk to her quick. So, all right, <coughs> I will um, apologize in advance. It's, it's, it, it's just one of those. Oh. The, local, the local news station was interviewing an 80-year-old lady because she had just gotten married for the fourth time. The interviewer asked a question about her life, about uh, what it felt like being married again at 80, and then um, about her new husband's occupation. Well, he's a funeral director, she, she answered. <laughs> well, interesting, the newsman thought. Um, he then uh, asked her if she wouldn't mind telling him a little about her first three husbands and what they did for a living. She paused for a few minutes, needing time to reflect on all of those years. After a short time, a smile came on her face, and she answered proudly, explaining, that she had first married a banker when she was in her early 20s, 
then a circus ringmaster in her 40s, uh, later on a preacher in her 60s, and now in her 80s, a funeral director. The interviewer looked at her quite astonished and asked her why she had married four men with such diverse careers. She smiled and explained, well, I married one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, and four to go. <laughs> Uh, at least I apologized in advance, right? Let's begin with a prayer, shall we? This is a plea for sacred ground. Loving spirit of light, plant my feet on sacred ground. Help me to view life from the sacred perspective. This sacred place holds no fear, no criticism, and no judgment. Just me, you, and this journey with clear discernment. Help me to see things as they truly are, rather than from a perspective of pain and woundedness. Help me to see my old wounds from this perspective. Help me to understand my old, what my old pain reveals as opportunities to learn and grow with my ascension process. From sacred ground, help me ascend. May it be so, amen. And our gratitude is I'm grateful for my journey to sacred ground. <clears throat> I'd like to read to you from um, our book of Ancient Ones. Ancient Ones are a channeled group of ascended beings that are here to assist us on our journey. And they have some pretty profound things to say. Here's what they have to say about a new you. <clears throat> a new day is dawning for you. Not just a physical day with the sun rising in the sky, but a new dawning of awareness with your insight expanding in the sky of your mind. You are evolving. Even the cells of your body do not remain the same, and your energetic self evolves as well. With each new level of awareness, a new energy is deposited down into your DNA, transforming you. Your responses to life will not be the same. Your feelings will harmonize with abundance and joy. Your strengths will strengthen, and your weaknesses will fade. You already have invested the effort. Now allow the change to take place. Grudges, past hurts, and old sorrows coupled with regrets lock you into your previous self, your suffering self. You are ready to move beyond suffering. Challenges in life will happen. That's the way of living. Yet you will not suffer as a result. There will be an uplifting and a cherishing that will bless you and carry you through any discomfort. This allows you to rise above the old and shift into the new. The new you is expansive. The new you is, a, is loving with clear, safe boundaries. The new you is blessed and is a blessing. The new you is here. Welcome to the new you. The new you holds an amazing future before you. We await you there. <clears throat> you want to do our gong, William? Give it three strikes, if you would. Good morning. We have a guest speaker today. Well, a couple of guest speakers, actually. Um, <clears throat> the first person up is our very own, uh, well, let me tell you a little bit about her first. She's been with us for quite some time and has just recently been nudged uh, spiritually to step up and share uh, some more insights. She shared with me 
uh, the writings of what she was going to present to you today, and there's some powerful stuff here. So if you would give a good Divine Fellowship welcome to Lynn Spicer. Good morning. Good morning. Well, gee. Shannon has so many better tools than I've got. I'm so jealous of her. I mean, come on. I could never be that good. I just got a camera. <laughs> and, and would you look at Sandra's hair? I mean, how envious am I of all that beautiful, thick hair? I mean, gosh, and not only that, she has tools I don't have. I sure wish I could be as smart as Janice. Boy, is she smart. She just knows so much. Do you know who your biggest critic is? <laughs> That's right. We're always judging ourselves, and I thought we weren't supposed to be judgmental, but we are very critical of ourselves. And so how often do you feel that you just don't measure up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. But who are you comparing yourself to? Right? I got to call El Toro Poo Poo on your thoughts. <laughs> First of all, weren't we created in God's image? Are you going to tell him he messed up? I don't think so. Would you believe that we're hardwired and programmed even to make comparisons? In an article that I just read, and I'm going to quote, it's a survival tactic that helped early humans keep up with their tribes. Who are we trying to keep up with right now? It's almost spontaneous in given situations for us to compare ourselves. What if we flip that script? Start by writing a list of five things that you are truly grateful for and that you're really good with. And this is going to help center you in your own reality so that making these comparisons aren't going to be such a temptation. The old adage, if it seems too good to be true, really applies to us here, doesn't it? So let's take social media. <coughs> you take it. I don't want it anymore. <laughs> It's easy to get jealous of those that are sharing amazing stories or awesome vacation pictures. Jealousy and envy are often the first step towards comparing ourselves. But what is it that you don't see? What is it that what details are you missing that there are aspects in any life that you don't see? And these often happen prior to the posting. But just remember, you're only seeing the highlights of what people want you to see. Yeah, we're going to feel a twinge of envy. That's only natural. But remember, you're just seeing a small person, portion of this person's life. And if you consider that there are aspects that, of their life that you don't know, maybe you can realize that you have it even better. I've got a friend who's gorgeous. She's really pretty. She's kind. She's talented. She's got a handsome, supportive husband. She's got two cute dogs. I mean, she's got everything going for her. But I could be jealous and, and compare myself to her, except that I know her story. I know that she has a crippling disease. And I know that those dogs are the only children that she'll ever be able to have. That really puts things in perspective. And it helps me see how amazing I am in comparison to her. And so what I'd like you to do to curb this urge to compare yourselves with others is make a list of times that you felt confident and powerful 
um, things that you've overcome and survived. Maybe you've overcome a bad childhood. Maybe you've overcome a bad marriage. Uh, you survived. You rose above that. So let's call this list your power list, okay? And every day, I want you to read your power list. Maybe tape it to somewhere that you're going to see it and it's going to be right in your face. And that's going to help you feel more confident and it's going to highlight your unique strengths. And then you're going to see how really amazing you are. If you're not sure what to put on your power list, um, think about this. If your parents, you each had a part in bringing a unique individual to this earth. Dads, you started the creation. Moms, you carried this child for nine months and then you survived the pain of delivery. I mean, you endured all the quirks of being pregnant. I mean, how, how amazing is that? I mean, wow, pat yourselves on the back for that. And my hat's off to both of you. You can do anything that you set your minds to do. And I'm not saying it won't be without challenges. <laughs> Anybody that's had teenagers knows about challenges. But you met each challenge, you persevered, and came out on the other side stronger and more knowledgeable. And it's often easy to forget the good stuff and remember the bad stuff. And that's going to take away from our positive feelings about ourselves. But don't let yourself be cut by this two-edged sword. Okay? You accomplished something and you deserve the recognition for it. The reward. You did that. It's okay to pat yourself on the back. Maybe that's the only pat we're going to get. But do others tell you that, that you make them feel calm and peaceful and that being with you makes them feel special? Do you get told that you give great hugs, William? <laughs> you see where I'm going here? Uh -huh. Even seemingly small positives can build confidence and add to your power list. So cut yourself some slack. If you're trying to improve an area of your life, recognize and honor the work you're putting in and give yourself credit. This will help you focus on the big picture. And by recognizing what a great person you are, you won't be as tempted to compare yourself to others. And then reward your efforts and positivity with something that you've been wanting. And this doesn't have to be anything expensive or major. It could be something small. Maybe five minutes outside with a cup of coffee enjoying the day. Or maybe it's a book by your favorite author, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> or how about a manicure or a pedicure or even both? I mean, your reward can be anything that makes you feel special. Like fine wine and cheese, our self-image improves with age, and we get more comfortable in our own skin. Also, our give-a-crap meter just shrinks. <laughs> <laughs> and it becomes less important to compete and compare. We're reminded of everything we've already accomplished and our own personal growth. So let's look at Comparison is a growth lesson. If you want to be like someone else, change your attitude and learn from that person. Change your envy into a learning activity. We may never really match up, but we're already perfect, so why try? <laughs> Take heart in knowing that those people that really matter, they think you're exceptional. Honor your strengths, your heart, your person. You truly are incredible. 
And I love this quote by Truman Capote. And for those youngsters who have no clue who Truman Capote was, he wrote a book called In Cold Blood, which was, it was a true crime story and it was pretty awesome. But he said, failure is the condiment that gives success its flavor. I love that quote. So remember, your power list is your awesomeness. And just before we started this morning, I looked up Bible verses regarding comparing ourselves to others. I found two that I really liked. Galatians 1.10. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I wouldn't be a servant of God. And the other one I really liked was Romans 12.6. Let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. Okay. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Good. <laughs> <laughs> How does it work? Yeah. 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 What? Hello. Hey. So um, I'm at, <laughs> I just love that um, Janice put our two things together. We were both kind of aspired with a message. But I, I guess right now we're having maybe a commercial in between. Yeah. Do you remember how in past years some of you may have been here where we handed out these cards, and it is a roll for you for the upcoming year. Uh, I'll show you here. So, the, I just give me a second here. I'm going to pull these together. My little magic bag here, and I'm going to ask you to help. because I want to show you how this works and what these are exactly. There's two cards this year, and um, I'll put them there. And this is inspired from Facebook. You know, you see all those posts are, goes around and says, what's your birthday, or, you know, and you pick up a name for yourself. Um, and so what we're going to do today, and Lynn, I'm going to have you start by picking one so people can see. Oh. There's two things here. One's number one, one's number two. So your instruction is you pick a one and you pick a two, <laughs> just so that it's clear. And the order that you read them in is going to be read number one first and number two second. So, so you can see for an example, would you pick one for yourself from each pile? And then what do you have? Teacher of Blessed Mother Earth. Oh. Aww. <laughs> yeah. And for me, I had received Guide of Awakening Awareness. Oh. There. And now, Lynn, that's yours. Would you pick one for the people on YouTube? Wizard, <laughs> who encourages imaginative cooperation. Wow. <laughs> so what we'll do, and we'll just keep that out for you guys there on face, um, or on YouTube, excuse me, Facebook, YouTube, 
And I'll, I'll, number one will go this direction, and number two will go this direction. And everybody just pick one from each. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and as that goes around, I wanted to share with you, I was kind of wondering whether to do this again this year. You know, it's like I've done it two years in a row, and, um, you know, it's a little silly and a little fun. And, and when I just meditated with that, I got this message. And I want to share that with you. And it says, each of you has an important role to pay in 2020. Please know that you are all capable and more than ready to step into these new roles. Encourage each other in these roles. Believe in yourselves and in believe in each other. Your combined energy is truly magnificent. Know also that you are part of a greater force gathering here on the Earth plane. Can you feel it? So I love that this follows Lynn. Because you know what Lynn is saying, don't compare yourself to others. And this is taking it one step more and just saying, not only don't compare yourself, but it's really important that you are you, because when you are you, and you are you, <laughs> together you create something even greater and more magnificent. And so if you try being a uh, less than perfect version of somebody else, <laughs> it's not as powerful. So we'll just kind of wait as these go around. Because the other thing that I got in this process was after I got that message, I saw this maybe sharing our roles with each other and then asking our question about what happens when we combine those two together. So, so we can get those around. <laughs> Do I play do, 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 do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we know how to do that. And that's years of experience, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Yeah. yeah, how many else have kept yours from last year? <laughs> That's so cool. Mine last year was Conduit of Imaginative Change. Ooh, and I, but, but it was me last year, right? Because, um, you know, with my engineering background and all that, it was just like, that wasn't a role that was typical for me. And boy, did that play out over the last year. <laughs> Um, so Guide of Awakening Awareness, it really felt like it resonated with the message that I'll be giving next today. Um, because the guide had a picture of light, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about light. And kind of this, the um, ancient ones I really feel are guiding us into a new path. And uh, a lot of what I'll be talking about today is sharing teachings from the ancient ones. And, um, and they're um, guiding us into this awakening awareness. And I think perhaps my role is helping that information be accessible <coughs> to everybody here through the website or even through what I'm talking about today. How many, uh, do, do people, anybody have two of theirs? Okay, Sandra, read yours. Awakening. <laughs> Who else? Okay, Val, what's yours? Earth angel with an important purpose. And you both are angels. <laughs> okay, so yours again. Angel of playful awakening. An angel with playful awakening, Earth, here on Earth, 
And? First angel with an important purpose. An important purpose. Okay, what happens if you two angels get together? <laughs> yeah. Because you bring that out, that's bringing that element of play, and you're bringing that element of importance and focus. So just imagine the two of you. Okay, so who else has, okay, Kelly. Guardian of plain truth. Whoa, okay. Who else, okay, Roy. Pathfinder of gentle intuition. Pathfinder of gentle, okay. And you are guardian? Of plain truth. Okay, so Roy, what if you get together with Kelly? What energy does that create? A guardian and a pathfinder. Yeah, because you know you have a, a, a guardian and a pathfinder. It feels like a, a Tolkien novel, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of awesome. Um, who else wants to share? Okay, Nancy. Celestial being of miraculous experiences. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> okay, Jackie. I don't want to that. No, no, please do, though. Please don't compare. I'm not. I'm not. Kidding. No, no, but that's a point, isn't it? Yeah. Guide of renewing energy. Guide, okay, another guy. Okay. Guide of renewing energy. And Nancy again? Celestial being of miraculous experiences. Okay, put those two together. A celestial being in, with a guide. You know, those two, that's. <laughs> okay. In. Whoa! <laughs> Get your head around that one. Yeah, I'm having issues with this right now. <laughs> pull, pull, pull out of here. This is from the. Oh, yep, maybe you need to. Or just pick whichever one. You are worthy. Fix your sights upon a bright light of awareness. <laughs> 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 That's a message from the ancient one. <laughs> you are worthy. Um, okay. So, who wants to? Okay. Um, Miss me. With extraordinary capabilities and spirit weaver. Okay. Read that in the opposite order. Spirit weaver and just extraordinary capabilities. Wow. Okay. Now picture that with the organizer of the cosmic universe. Perfect. So the two of you, you weave that together, and you're connecting to this huge So, So isn't this kind of cool? Yeah. And that's what I got that this is all about. Each of us stepping together and um, coming into something greater. Jenna. That my fellowship is earth healers with unlimited ideas. Wow. Oh. Goosebumps. <laughs> Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? Yes? Mine goes with that. Wise healer of abundance and manifestation. Yeah. So, yeah, each of you think about how that fits with the church. Yours fits with the church's mission. Yes, Jen. Mine was instructor of compassion and peace. Go <laughs> figure. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, that, in that package, there was only one instructor thing. <laughs> And you got it. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I got, okay, one more. May is getting. Star seed of strength and wisdom. Okay, um, we had got together yesterday, and you were a star seed. And again, there's only one star seed in the package. She's picked it two days in a row, but she put hers back in. <laughs> Oh, you kept it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Radiant body of Akashic. Of the Akashic records. Ooh. And I added the Akashic records in because I just got that sense that we're accessing bigger and better knowledge. Explain the Akashic records. The Akashic records are supposedly this <laughs> universal database from all the past and future that we're able to tap into. And it, it just propels how quickly we learn and know and access information. Okay, last one. Ancient soul of enlightenment. Woo! 
Okay, then, okay, you can see how that might go with the Akashic Records. <laughs> So thank you so much for doing that. And um, so, so in this, you know, I'll kind of switch more into my message today. And everything I'm saying was inspired by the ancient ones. But to start that off, put a smile on your face right now, if you would, and say after me out loud, I am a being of light. I am a being of light. I can't help but shine. I can't help but shine. Now, we are children of the light. We are children of the light. As holy offspring, we cannot not shine. As holy offspring, we cannot not shine. <laughs> so my, what I wanted to talk to today is some techniques of the ancient ones that allow us to shift quickly out of feelings of negative thoughts, comparing ourselves to the other, regrets, worry about the world. <laughs> um, those things that are kind of weighing really heavy on us. And to um, change out of those thoughts quickly and into a more joyful, light-filled perspective. And as background, I started working with the Ancient Ones about a um, year ago. I mean, we've been hearing them for, for years, as teachings and messages from the Ancient Ones through Janus. But I actually sat down and um, put them all together um, and read them all at once. And I, after reading them, I did not really sleep well for the next three days. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, Janice, <laughs> you know, this is awesome. And she gave me a really pro um, powerful grounding technique. But that was my um, aha moment that I realized that the Ancient One messages are real, really energetic messages as well as just kind of intellectual read the words messages. When you read the Ancient Ones, you're being given an energetic download that goes with it. And I started, I, you maybe saw how I gave a um, little thing for Shannon, and it said she's worthy. Well, I created these little, um, whatever I did with them, there it is. I just created this little pouch and, you know, that had something from each one of the ancient one message. And I just started picking them out. Um, Allow the healing light of love to penetrate your circumstances. You know, I started pulling them out um, on the day and reading them. And it had an incredible synchronicity that developed around it. And uh, there's so much I could say about that. But one in particular came in um, October of last year. And I love this, allow the healing light of love to penetrate your circumstances. Because the synchronicity I got was that over several days, every one of these that I pulled out had the word light in it. And it was um, day after day, I got this message about light. And it, um, I was like, OK, I think I'm, I'm getting the message. And let me pull this out real quickly here. Um, I pulled it out there. You know, it says, be, be um, love and light. Fix your sight upon the bright light of awareness and you are the light of the world. You know, I just, all of these, and Janice picked up of it, on it, because um, she said, because at the end of it, I went, wow, I think this was around the time of the Festival of Lights. And so Janice, it was on a Sunday, she said, oh, okay, when's the Festival of Lights, right? <laughs> and, um, and that all kind of brought it together, but that was when I really tuned into the fact that I am a being of light, and this isn't a good or bad or, or whatever to, to go with that. Um, the next time I got around was another message that came in December, which says, your heart and mind link with your soul spirit to create, to create. What your heart desires and your mind can conceive, your soul spirit accesses the divine energy to create. This creation is miraculous. Within this creation, energy holds a higher awareness that guides you not only to creating your heart's desire, 
but to much more and much better than your mind can imagine. And after that, I went, I want that. <laughs> you know, I want that in my life because it talks about manifesting in accordance with your divine um, purpose. And what was gifted to me after that is for several days, and I need to move on to this meditation because that's how I'll guide it to you and give you this handout. But for several days, I received this message, and each one of the message from the Divine One said something about, in this moment, you can create change. And at the end of that, I wrote them all down, all these different techniques that you can create change in this instant moment. And I came up with the, the, um, the idea of, um, or the word sage dawn, sage dawn. So sage is for clearing, and dawn is for new beginnings. Um, so it's clearing for a new beginning. And so on this sheet, I have eight different techniques from the ancient ones, from smiling in your affirmation, gratitude, exhaling, you know, your stress, asking for divine assistance, showing appreciation and blessing others, having wonder and curiosity, and noticing. Um, yeah, I think I must. I'm just going to stand there around. And so rather than really talking about that, what I'd like to do now is just kind of close with a short meditation where you can use these techniques. Yeah. <coughs> so take a moment now and just close your eyes. You may want to, while these continue to go around, just roll your shoulders and release any tension that you have. <coughs> and start to bring your awareness into this present moment. Breathing gently in and gently out. <coughs> now in this present moment, bring a soft smile to your face. And notice how this smile changes how you feel. The ancient ones say, we cannot say enough about the influence that a smile has upon your world. Allow the power of your smile to shift you into a more peaceful and joyous state. Allow yourself to connect fully within the light that is within you. You may feel this in your heart space, or your solar plexus, whatever feels right for you. Know the truth, you are a being of light. Repeat silently to yourself, I am a being of light. I cannot help but shine. As you affirm this truth, you may notice your light becoming brighter and brighter and more <coughs> focused. Imagine the ancient ones looking down from the ethereal rain, realm, basking in this light. You may also feel your light connecting with the light from others in this room. And you can feel this intensify as your light connects with the light with the others in this room. The ancient ones say that the light sings with a harmonic resonance that shatters the constructs of suffering, healing, and uplifting this earth. How powerful is that? And with gratitude in your heart, realize the truth and power of this light. And in this moment of deep gratitude, 
Be aware of your breath gently going in and out. On the exhale, let go of any feelings of unworthiness, regret, or guilt. And on the inhale, breathe in new opportunities and new insights. On the exhale, let go of distressing or th toxic thoughts. And on the inhale, breathe in new life force energy. With each exhale, release and let go. And with each inhale, bring in new beginnings, a new and more joyous way of being. And in this place of new beginning, know that you can truly choose who you are, who you will become, and what you will do. This is a moment of awakening. And in this awakened way, you can offer to the divine source any inner conflict or trauma that no longer serves you. And with this freedom comes greater serenity, greater peace. And within this moment, you can feel your soul soar above all conflict. And in this moment, you can also ask for divine guidance. Maybe it's on the next right step on your journey. And you can give thanks for spirit's guidance. <laughs> 